my name is Sarah and welcome to Stacks and Scones. It's officially time for my first book review and I am super excited. I know that I'm going to love doing tags and wrap ups and TBRs and you know all sorts of other fun discussion type videos that we have running around here on booktube but I really think that the reviews are going to wind up being some of my favorite videos because the whole reason for starting this booktube channel in the first place was to find a place on the internet to talk about books. If you guys watched my August wrap up video on Tuesday or anytime this week, then you've already seen me talk a little bit about this book because the review today is on The Sleepwalker's Guide to Dancing by Mira Jacob. This book first caught my eye just because of the cover. I really love it. I think it's one of my favorite covers that I have in my entire collection. And then I picked it up, read the premise, and it sounded really unique and interesting, and so I decided to give it a shot. The book follows the story of Amina A. Penn, who is the 30-year-old daughter of an Indian immigrant family who came to the United States in the 1970s. She currently lives in Seattle, Washington, where she works as a lifestyle and wedding photographer, and one day gets a phone call from her mother, Kamala, who is a little bit concerned because her father, Thomas, a celebrated brain surgeon, is talking to dead relatives. Kamala asks Amina to come home and see if she can figure out what's going on with her dad because he won't even admit that something's wrong, much less actually talk to Kamala about what is happening. Over the course of the novel, Amina comes to realize that in order to help her father work through what he is dealing with, she's going to have to come to terms with her family's past and reckon with some of the ghosts that haunt her, her father, her mother, and the rest of her family and friends. There were a few things that I really, really loved about this book. One, I just really loved the general theme that in order to move forward positively into your future, you have to deal with your past and you have to grapple with the ghosts and the things that you've done that maybe you are not so proud of or that you regret. Because if you sort of bury them and ignore them, then eventually they're going to keep coming back up and it's going to prevent you from moving forward and really becoming the person that you want to be. And that's not a theme or a topic that I've really seen addressed in a novel before. I've seen it talked about in, you know, probably countless self-help books and things like that, but this is not a theme I've ever seen a author attack in a narrative fashion before. A few of the other things that I really loved about this book were the characters and the descriptions. Jacob has a beautiful use of description and she is very much a shower, not a teller. The descriptions that she gives of the various locations that the novel takes place in, which include Seattle, Albuquerque, and India, are just beautiful. I've never actually been to India myself, but I have several friends that have spent a lot of time there and I've heard a lot of first person accounts about the sights and the sounds and the smells and just the overall feeling that you get when you're in that country. I've seen videos and pictures and all sorts of things and the descriptions that she gives are so evocative of everything that I've ever imagined India to be like. On top of that, the characters in this book are just so vibrant and fun and wonderful. I think they're all really developed quite well from Amina to her mother to her father to her brother Akil to the various aunts and uncles and other family members that sort of come in and out of the story. I really loved how the Indian culture and just the role that family plays in that culture really came into play in the narrative. I loved how she really captured the way that culture can play into how you interact in a family. There were a couple things that I didn't like about this book. The first and biggest one is the nonlinear style it was written in. I've noticed this a lot more recently in a lot of contemporary novels where rather than just doing the narrative, you know, straight from start to finish and giving flashbacks or whatever to give you backstory, they hop around from um, past to present and things like that and, you know, we will hop around in both location and time. And Jacob does this throughout the story, hopping from India in the 1970s to the United States in the 1980s to the 1990s, which is where the present day of the novel takes place. And while I think that can be done extremely well, and I've seen it done really well in some novels that I've read recently, in this particular book it felt very choppy to me. She specifically breaks up the different times and locations in a way that makes it so you know when you're shifting, but she breaks it up so that it almost feels like mini novellas because she'll write several chapters in one time and one location and then break and restart the chapter numbers when you move to another time and another location. And I think that could have been done a little bit better. It just didn't seem to flow for me from one to the next. And I felt like there was just, there was something, sometimes there were links missing from one part to the next. And it just wound up killing the arc of the story for me a little bit. I did still really enjoy it, but I feel like I would have loved it a lot more if the story had flowed better and it wasn't broken up so much like it is because of the nonlinear style that she uses to write. 
The other thing that I didn't enjoy was the graphic detail that she uses to describe a few of the intimate, intimate encounters that Amina has. She's a 30 year old woman and she winds up dating a guy and so you know they have sex and things like that and I recognize that those are things that happen in life and in novels but when it comes to things like sex and much more of a fade to black you know leave it to the imagination kind of person and that is not what she does at, in this novel at all. I mean she's very graphic about who's touching what and when and where and what is happening and it really took away from the novel in my opinion because the the crux of the novel is not her relationship with this guy. The crux of the novel is her relationship with her family. You could have cut the guy that she winds up dating completely out of the story and it wouldn't have made that much of a difference. And so it turned me off in a way that was just sort of compounded by my already dislike of the nonlinear style and then adding that in, it was just another thing that sort of pulled me out of the story and made me go, ugh, I don't, I don't know if I love this. I wound up giving it three and a half out of five stars because, like I said, I really loved the premise, I really loved the description and the characters and all of those things, but the non-linear style in particular was what really dragged it down for me. I do recommend reading this book because it is so incredibly unique. And in particular, if you enjoy the non-linear style or at least don't mind it, then I would definitely recommend checking this one out. Well, there you have it, friends. That is my review of The Sleepwalker's Guide to Dancing by Mira Jacob. If you've read the book, I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions on it in the comments. And even if you haven't, I would love to hear what you think of the nonlinear style that she uses to write. Is that something that you've seen in contemporary novels and something you enjoy or something you dislike? Also, I would love to hear your thoughts on the main theme that she runs through the story, that, that idea of needing to grapple with your past in order to move forward with your future. If you want to follow me elsewhere online, you can find me on Twitter at Sarah Ann Hayes, on Instagram at Sarah Ann Hayes, and my writing is at SarahAnnHayes.com. Thank you so, so much for watching. Please say hi in the comments. I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions, and especially would love to hear what you think of the book if you wind up reading it. And I will see you next time. Bye! Because the tip... The book follows the story of Amina Epen. Epen? Epen? I'm not, I'm not really sure how you pronounce that. E-A-P-E-N. Epen? Epen? Something? Some pen? And it is officially time for my first book review. Wow. First? First book review.